Well, hello for you, and welcome back to our work uh, with some radian measure. Uh, we're going to start our work on trig identities today with the compound angle formulas. Uh, our goal, I know what the compound angle formulas are, and I can use them to find the exact answers for trig problems. So we're going to deal with that first part there, I know what the compound angle formulas are, right here. I've given them to you. Um, the proof is on page 228 to 230 of your textbook. I'm not going to go over the development at this time. I don't usually like to do that. I don't like to give you magic formulas and then just say, well, just use them. Um, but for I don't want this to go on too long either. So uh, there's a pretty good explanation of the proof in your textbook, and it would be a good idea for you to go and have a look at page 228 uh, to 230 in your textbook to see where these formulas actually came from. What we're going to do today is actually use them. So, uh, what I want you to do is notice the pattern here, and you're going to be able to use a page that has trig identities on them. But if you can see the pattern, you can recognize um, just that much quicker what you're going to have to use. So here's the pattern. The cosine formula always have the products of cos and the products of sine, where the sine formula is a mix of the two. So see, sine says sine cos cosine, and sine cos cosine, and the cos formulas is cos cos sine sine, and cos cos sine sine. Okay, now what this means, and I'm just going to go over just a little bit, uh, basically what this is not. When we do trig identities, if you ever have sine of, um, let's say, x plus y, the distributive law does not apply here because this is not a multiplication. This is one of the biggest places that I see mistakes where people say, oh, well, I can just distribute the sine through the brackets. And we get sine x plus sine y. That is a big no-no. It doesn't work that way. If you have sine x plus y, you can, in fact, expand those brackets, but this is the way you have to expand it. And for proof of that, see page 228 to 230. Okay, So you can't just multiply the sine through. It becomes this expression. Or if you have the sine x minus y, it becomes this expression. Now the second part here, the cosine formulas have the opposite sine in the brackets as an expanded form where sine has the same. So sine has the same, so if this is a plus here, it's a plus here. If it's a minus here, it's a minus here. And sine goes sine cos cosine, sine cos cosine. Cos goes cos cos sine sine, cos cos sine sine. And if there's a plus in the brackets here, there's a minus over here. If there's a negative in the brackets here, there's a plus over here. Now, like I said, you're going to be able to use these on a trig identity page, so I'm not expecting you to memorize them. But if you can remember those patterns, it's fairly easy to memorize them. Okay, example number one. Use an appropriate compound angle formula to express the following as a single trig function. So we've got, oh, look at this. We've got a cos cos sine sine. So what I want to do is collapse this back down where this is my x and this is my y and that means that this is an x and this is a y so I want to collapse it down back into a single trig function with a plus or a minus uh, with a sum or a subtraction in the brackets now what does this actually say here let's just move this up which double angle formula is involved? Notice the form, cos cos sine sine. So when it's cos cos sine sine, this is the cos double angle formula. And since cos uses opposites, that's going to be a plus. So this has to be cos of x plus y equals cos pi by 5 cos pi by 3 minus sine pi by 5 sine pi by 3, which means that when I collapse it back down, my x plus y is going to be cos of pi by 5 um, plus pi by 3 when I'm using this thing, 
Okay, Collapse it back down, I need a plus between them, and here's my x and my y. So how does that help us? This says use an appropriate compound angle formula to express it as a single trig function. So just a single trig function. Um, so now I'm going to use what I know about these, um, get a common denominator so it's a single angle. Uh, so I can get a common denominator of 15. This 5 had, needs a 3 on the top, so I'm going to have a 3 pi on top. And this 3 to turn into 15 needs to times by 5, so I have to times the pi on top by 5 as well. So that means that as a single trig, it is 8 pi by 15. Okay, next. Apply the compound angle formula for this to get an exact answer. Now, that means we're going to see some uh, special angles. So think which formula this is and expand it. So I want to expand this out, but remember I can't just multiply the sign through the brackets. I have to figure out which formula I want. Well, this is sine of x plus y. Whoops, sorry, not x plus y. x minus y. And the sine of x minus y is sine cos cos sine and since this is a negative um, sine this has to be a negative in here too and now we're just gonna fill these things in so this is gonna be 5 pi by 6 pi by 4 5 pi by 6 and pi by 4 now 5 pi by 6 and pi by 4 we can use um, our special triangles to get those things so we can figure out what sine 5 pi by 6 and cos pi by 4 are. Now the uh, pi by 4 ones come directly from the special triangle. Um, this triangle where these two sides are both 1. So it's the 1 1 root 2 triangle where this is pi by 4 in the middle. So uh, the cos of pi by 4, I'm going to replace all of these with brackets and now I have to put a number in there. So the pi by 4 ones are easy. Uh, I'm going to use red to fill in the pi by 4 ones. Um, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse and sine is opposite over hypotenuse and they're both 1 over root 2. So this is 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2. Now to get the 5 pi by 6 we have to draw it out. Where is 5 pi by 6 in the grand scheme of things if we're talking about cast rule. Well, 6 pi by 6 would take us all the way over here because 6 pi by 6 is 1 pi, which is half the rotation. And so if 6 pi, pi by 6 takes us over there, 5 pi by 6 will take us almost there. It's 1 pi by 6 away, right? So here's my triangle. And my special angle I'm going to use is the pi by 6 one, which is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. And pi by 6 is a smaller angle than pi by 3, which is what's up here. So since it's a smaller angle, then we get the 1, 2, root 3 is the way we're going to put those on the triangle. Okay, So this whole angle here is 5 pi by 6 but we can use the pi by 6 in this little one to get our sine as long as we remember the cast rule. Okay, so uh, sine and cos. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is a half. I'm going to use green this time. And cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. But we have to remember what, um, what our signs are. So if we put cast on here, in this quadrant, only sine is positive, which means cos is negative. So up here where we have a cos, we're going to put a negative in there. Now we're going to just simplify this out to get an exact answer. This is working with radicals. So 1 times 1 is 1 on top, and 2 times root 2 is 2 root 2. I get two negatives here. Together they're going to make a positive, and then I get root 3 over 2 root 2. Um, when I add those together, they've already got a common denominator, so I'm just going to get 1 plus root 3 over 2 root 2. 
but we know that we cannot leave this with a rational in the denominator, so we've got to rationalize the denominator, so we're going to multiply top and bottom by root 2. And when we multiply top and bottom by root 2, we get two, root 2 plus root 6, and on the bottom root 2 times root 2 is 2, and then I get to multiply it by 2, so it's 4. And that's the exact answer in the right form. Next, use an appropriate compound angle formula to find the exact value of 11 pi by 12. So we have to come up with some way of writing 11 pi by 12 as two multiples of special angles. Now remember the denominators of our special angles are all like 4 by, that would be pi by 4, that's a special angle, pi by 3, pi by 6, and pi by 2 is a special angle as well. So if I can write this, 11 pi uh, by 12, as some multiple of those, so that they have those denominators, then I can find exact answers. So here's the what I want you to notice, that 11 pi by 12, now how do we do this? This is a little bit tricky. Um, I want and we're going to write them either as a sum or a difference, but I'm going to write it like this to start with. I need something to cancel into 12 so that I either get a 2 on the bottom, a 6 on the bottom, a 3 on the bottom, or 4 on the bottom. And there might be more than one way to do this. So if I put a 5 here, nothing cancels, so that doesn't help me. Um, but what if I put an 8 here? An 8 here would cancel into the bottom. Well, what do I have to put with 8 to get me 11? That would be a 3. So 8 and 3 is 11. And 3 cancels into 12 and 8 cancels into 12. So let's cancel it into 12. Um, 4 goes into 8 twice and into 12 three times. And 3 goes into 3 once and into 12 four times. So what we actually have here is that 11 pi by 12 equals 2 pi by 3 plus pi by 4. Now sometimes it takes a little um, a little fiddling to find one, but if we can express the given angle as a sum or difference of two special angles, we can use the formulas to expand and then evaluate. So we're going to use the formula to expand here. Um, now we're looking at sine, so it's the sine of a sum. So we want to take the sine of 2 pi by 3 plus pi by 4, and we're going to expand that out. Remember it's sine, so it goes sine, cos, cos, sine, and we need the same sign, so this was a plus, so this is going to be a plus, and then we're just going to go 2 pi by 3, 2 pi by 3, and pi by 4 pi by 4. Um, again, pi by 4 is easy. I'm going to put my brackets in here. I need to fill these things in. Oh, that's a plus in there. Need to fill these things in with what I know those are. Sine and pi by 4 and cos of pi by 4, they're up here. Sine of pi by 4 and cos of pi by 4 is um, whoops, 1 over root 2. So I can fill those in. Uh, 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2. And now we have to figure out where on earth is 2 pi by 3. So where is 2 pi by 3? Well, 1 and a half pi by 3, 1.5 pi by 3, that will go in there twice. So that would be pi by 2. So that would take me up to here. So I need to go a little bit further than that. So it's going to be in quad 2. So I can just draw an angle in quad 2. And I know that this in here is going to be 2 pi by 3. Now 3 pi by 3 would take us right over. So I need another pi by 3. And I hope you realize that 2 pi by 3 plus pi by 3 equals 3 pi by 3. And 3 pi by 3, 3 pi by 3 is simply pi. So that's how we figure out where that one is. Now I can use the pi by 3 in here, that's just a pi by 3. 
and pi by 3 is 60 degrees because 180 divided by 3 is 60. So I need the bigger side over here. So that's the 2, uh, or sorry, the root 3. Oops. So this is root 3 over here. Uh, this is 2 and this is 1. So the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Um, now I just need to figure out what the sine and the cos are. Sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 1 half. And now, using cast rule, we have to put the appropriate sine on there. In this quadrant, only sine is positive, so the cos has to be negative. So now let's find the exact answer here. This is going to be root 3 over 2 root 2. And this is going to be minus this time uh, 1 over 2 root 2. Now they have the same denominator, so I don't have to worry about getting a common denominator. So this is going to be root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2. But again, to, I have to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by root 2. And when I multiply top and bottom by root 2, I get um, root 6 minus root 2 over root 2 times root 2 is 2, and then I multiply it by 2 is 4. And there's our final answer. Now this next example, I guarantee you there will be a question like this on the test and possibly even on the final exam. And this is one that people sometimes have a little bit of difficulty, so watch it at least once and possibly again. So the angles alpha and theta are located in the first quadrant. Now what that tells us is that it's in the A quadrant, so all are positive. So that gives us the cast rule um, for it. Everything is positive. Now this tells us sine theta is two-thirds and sine alpha is one-half, we want to find cos of alpha minus theta. Now we can't just subtract these two things because this is the sine and this is the sine. This is not, um, these are not the values of the angles. These are the values of the sines of the angles. So we have to actually do something with the expansion if we can. Um, now, these are also not special triangles, but I've been given enough information that I can turn them into their own kind of special triangle. So we start by saying, what is the expansion for the compound angle? So the expansion that we're looking for here for this compound angle, this is cos. So the expansion of cos theta minus alpha. Uh, cos is cos, cos, sine, sine. And it has the same sign in between it, or sorry, opposite sign in between it, so we put a plus there. So this is going to be theta, alpha, theta, alpha. And now what we have to do is figure out, because I have the signs, I could sub in here very easily. I could go right now and say, okay, the sine of theta is two thirds, and the sine of alpha is one half. I can plug those in here. Problem is, I don't know what cos theta and cos alpha is. And if I do, I could figure this one out very easily. Now, I've been given enough information that I can turn them into their own special triangles, though. So here we go. We are told that their first quadrant angle, so we know that the signs of the trig ratio from using cast rule. Other than that, we can use right triangles to find the values. Um, so I've been given enough information. If this one is, I'm going to use this for theta and this one I'm going to use for alpha. And I'm going to turn them into their own special triangles because I've been given two sides, basically, of a right angle triangle. Because it told me that sine theta is two-thirds. That's what it said up here. Sine theta is two-thirds. So that means opposite over hypotenuse is two-thirds. So opposite must be two and the hypotenuse must be three which means that I can use Pythagorean theorem to find this side by doing 3 squared minus 2 squared and then taking the square root of it. 
that'll give me what this side is, which is 9 minus 4, so we're going to have root 5. This is all Pythagorean theorem. Now over on this side, we were told that sine was 1 half. So I get to put this in this triangle, sine of alpha is 1 half. So that means that the opposite over the hypotenuse is 1 half. Make sure you put them in the right spot. Not all of the triangles will, I won't always give you sine, or the textbook won't always give you sine. So put them in the right spot. Now this side we're going to find using uh, Pythagorean theorem. So we do 2 squared minus 1 squared, and then we are going to take the square root of it. So that's 4 minus 1, or root 3. Now since I know it's in quad 1, I know that all of the trig ratios are going to be positive, so the two values I fill in for cos are positive. And other than that, I'm going to take them from just this triangle. Um, so cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be root 5 over 3. And over here, cos is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be root 3 over 2. Now I have to fiddle with this to get it down to um, an exact answer in simplest form. So I'm going to move all the way down here, uh, since I brought this in here. We're going to have root 5 over 3 times root 3 over 2 plus 2 over 3 times 1 half. And how do we simplify this thing? Well, that's going to be root 15 over 6 plus uh, 2 over 6, which is going to just be root 15 plus 2 over 6. Uh, not much else to do there. And that actually completes our lesson for today.